Hello and welcome to the level 4 presentation of uh, our highest level of function. And the whole goal for our patients is what is the highest level of function we can get them to. And uh, we're going to take a look at, in this presentation today, we're going to take a look at the tools that we use to get there. So um, we're going to be looking at some patient uh, scenarios uh, that we've uh, found right off the internet from uh, YouTube. This is our first patient we're going to take a look at. Uh, you can see that we're looking at stabilizing the upper trunk in this particular gait trainer or walker and we use this a lot. We see a lot of our therapists use this kind of device and the arms are firmly strapped in and the upper trunk is very very stable but we're not doing anything with the lower extremities, as we can see. Um, we're going just pretty much in any direction uh, with her lower extremities uh, where she feels she can get to. She, I mean, she's really very enthusiastic, but have we improved the gait? And as you can see, uh, we're well outside you know, a, a normal gait as well as outside the gait trainer. Um, so this is not something that we want to see. This is not an optimal way of, um, of bringing our kids into a higher level of function as far as walking. Again, you can really see from this shot, she is just, her upper trunk and her arms are really, really stable. They are not going anywhere. Um, <clears throat> and we have done nothing on the lower extremities to really help out this very enthusiastic kid. These are the kind of kids we love to work with because they really want to do it. They really want to get there. Um, and again, you can see from the front view, she is just trying her darndest. Um, but we have nothing for this highly motivated kid. We have nothing stabilizing her lower extremities and encouraging her um, to have a good functioning reciprocal gait. Um, and again, there you see her leg just keeps going outside the gait trainer because we have nothing stabilizing uh, the lower extremities while we are definitely stabilizing her upper trunk, her arms, um, and if we have some occupational therapists looking at this, we really want to keep their upper trunk mobile. Here's another gait instability that we'll always see, or that we will commonly see, is the feet trailing behind the body. Um, we really want the feet underneath the body uh, to give a, a, a true functioning gait. So, you know, how can we increase this level of function? I mean, with the feet behind the body, that's not what we want to see. Um, we have another kid here. Now we're kind of getting to where we need to be as far as trying to stabilize the lower extremity. Um, and we're doing that by adding some straps to prevent... Uh, this scissor gait and uh, you might need to tighten that up a little bit to just get a little bit more better position there prevent uh, some of that scissor gait but again we're also looking at you know uh, at least his forearms aren't strapped down but his upper trunk is stable but his he's not achieving foot flat he's his feet his initial contact is happening at the toes and again, another highly motivated, motivated patient, the kind of patients that we'd like to see and work with, um, but he doesn't have enough stability in the lower extremities. Uh, being on your toes is not, you know, the optimal position for a good functional gait. Um, and he's really not making a lot of a lot of ground. He's not covering a lot of ground. Now, we'd, let's. this is a very low-tone patient, and if you take a look at the patient's left foot, um, you'll notice some interesting uh, laxity there uh, in the lower extremity. Um, again, here we have another highly motivated kid um, uh, going into, you know, a standard type walker, gay trainer, um, and, uh, and you can see that he is very low tone, very loose, very lax. Um, but he has got a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. So, again, we have those ankle straps to prevent that scissor gait. But, I mean, 
we got a wide stance going on here, and even though we're preventing a scissor gate, um, really controlling uh, the the stability of the lower limbs. I mean, we are pretty much just like Jello here, and there's nothing stabilizing all the gait abnormalities that we're we're seeing with this particular patient. Mom is always having to uh, have to you know turn his feet in the right direction, and uh, the patient is struggling to just you know get his feet underneath him to support his body weight um, and it's just a continual battle for this kid as you can see he's he's really trying to get a reciprocal gait going but um, there is not enough stability at all in his lower extremities to help him again another kind of patient that we love working with very enthusiastic